what are we doing here today, sir? Doing the show. How did we get that that off? You actually got that off. Got yes, this. exactly. Cody Jacobs told me how to do it. What is this? This is your work mat? Yeah. You all place it out smooth and Keeps clean? Keeps clean. When you're building shocks, everything Okay. Clean. Is that important? Very important. And this is how you rebuild a shock? Yeah. A yeah. gas shock? Yeah, so I'm just building... I've got a shock that, I'm, that we're kind of happy with, but it needs to be a bit different areas. So instead of rebuilding that shock, I'm just building a new one. That's a little bit different. And then this is so this shock is going to be a rebound adjustable shock. So every time you turn that so on, so a single adjustable, it's going to be a single adjustable. So only the rebound. So the compression will be set to what it is, and then your rebound will obviously adjust. So when they go to click, because there's obviously double adjustable, single adjustable. Yeah, people yeah. know this. When you're clicking it, what is it actually changing? It, there's, so there's a rod inside this big shaft which moves up and down and controls how much oil flows through the shaft. So the bottom stacks your compression, the tops your rebound. That's all it is right here? Yeah. With a gas shock? Yeah. Would a That's uh, would an oil shock be a little different? Or? No, oil shock's very similar. Very similar. So it's just the top and the bottom? It's just the top and the bottom. And you're trying That's, to build resistance on the on the shaft? Yes, correct. And then when you're shocking, it's actually moving that it's, on top well, or the, the bottom? Well, the shaft is moving up and down, and the shims are opening. The oil is making the shims open and close. So this is where we bleed the shock. We get all the air out of it. That's a shock there, just like that. And that's, how, that you, take? Five that's how you would build one? Yeah. I mean, now we just got to dyno and see if it's to what I want it. I don't feel too bad. We're about to find out then. How will you know, no? When the dyno will tell me, usually you don't get them first try anyway. It takes a little bit. Right, okay, so let's go. So you're not even gonna make an adjustment, it's just uh, right. a little bit. I'm gonna make just a little bit too stiff, but it's not too bad. So how would you actually make an adjustment? As in what now? you're about to do, yeah, to change things. We're gonna change the shims, move the shims back around. So is it just about getting it wrong or Yeah, you just, it just takes a while, it doesn't happen straight off the bat. Every shock's different. So you can put these exact same shims into it and shock, it'll be a little bit different. It's just the way the pistons have been machined and shit. So you took some shims, these little things out? No, I just replaced them with different size, different thick shims. What are you actually looking for? You gotta make sure certain shims are lined up, otherwise it's just won't work. Which can be a little bit You gotta fun. put in new liquid? No, you just gotta top it. So it's basically all about having zero air. Zero air. No air. You don't want any air. No air, no fucking hair, no swarf. So then even though it's a gas shock, yep. it's an oil shock Correct. in a way. Correct. And what is gas just regulating the pressure? The gas is just in the chamber. And it's regulating so, how much pressure's in the actual body? Yes, correct. It's all Instead about of just being relying on the oil. All, it's all about the rod pressure. So you can have zero pound on that thing or a hundred pound. That won't change what numbers the shock up. It'll just change the amount of rod pressure on the shock. An oil shock has two tubes in it, and it just transfers oil from one tube to the other. So you could still be off right now, right? You'd have to reshim again, right? Yeah, yeah. It might take me fucking three or four goes, but it's the aim of the game. If you want it to be perfect. See, sometimes when you get your shocks built by a dealer, like a, and they got to build 50 shocks a, a week, it's probably not as crucial to them to get it to the pound. But once again, it could be a failure, and you'd have to restart. It probably will be. It probably will be. And I've had shocks that take me fucking days to get right. Really? Like days. Like to the point where I have to step away from them and just relax because... <laughs> They'll get you that mad. You get that lost in it and that mad. It's not bad. It's just not perfect. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. You're mad now. I'm mad, I'm just thinking. I mean, I'm happy with it, like I'd run it, but. Alright, we gotta go to work. What do you mean you gotta go to work? You're mad? No, we're gonna give a full fucking swing in this thing. Well, you, so wait, it's not far off, you're saying? It's not far off, but. So you're gonna have to do some far off shit to get it perfect? Yeah. Like what? Can't tell. 
So you're restarting on the whole build here with your shims? A little bit, yeah, just reassessing. Not changing all of them, just some of them. Do you still put the big gold one on? That's a piston, that's not a shim. That's a piston. So then, shim. are you putting shims on top and the bottom yeah, of that? Yeah, on either side of the piston. And so, so on the, each side of the piston is your compression, compression rebound side? Sides. Correct. Okay, and the top would be? Rebound. And the bottom would be? Compression. So when you look at the shaft, you see the bottom's compressing because right. when the shaft travels down, the oil's going to go through that shim stack first. Okay. But it also travels through the rebound side. Right. Try this, see if this works. If it don't, it don't. What did you just do here? This is on the compression this side? This is on the compression side, yeah. This is... No? I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, really? That's it? I'm happy with that, Chaz. Really? Yeah. It's close enough. Close enough to keep me happy. Seen enough for that show. That's it? Seen enough for that one. So we'll probably run this on the weekend, maybe for qualifying. And then so you'll put that around it? Yeah, that's for, yeah, that's a right rear gas cover, so that will go on that show. Okay. Then we got our bump rubbers in here, spare parts, spare rod ends, shims, gas. We have um, coil shit, coil hardware, body, spare body, spare gas chamber, spare shafts, little tricks and shit. gas bags. The other gas bag I was talking about in the mm -hmm. oil Yeah, and then covers, fucking bump cups, shims, and bearings. I don't think we got any of Chaz. Hang in the mics. Ocean bars. Yeah. Stand. Stand. Fuel lines, a couple shocks in there. Yeah, secret shocks. The secret one. The secret one. That's the bottom drawer, get them. When we're in trouble, we to grab these motherfuckers. I guarantee you, without even knowing, this will be the dirtiest fucking cupboard in the whole trailer. You know what this cupboard is? Just guess. What cunts never clean their shit? Rock up the day of the races. Tire guys. Boris. Driver's cupboard. Oh. Look at it. Fucking what the hell there. is this? Look, dirty fucking helmet. No Look what? at that. Wow. Fucking dirty helmet. And then gonna ask you why you ain't done. Smelly fucking. <laughs> fuck wow. This thing. How are you gonna eat after that? Look, fucking mud in here. Fucking drivers. Dirty socks. Actually, clean. If you ever wanna know what's holding the team back. Fuck. fuck. It sure as hell ain't Ricky they Warner. Are, they're all the fucking same. Wow. Where's the tire dirt? Oh, there it is. It's that simple. This is how we ride. This is how we do.